Hello Benefits, my name is Noel Rich, I am speaking to you from Buenos Aires, Argentina. In this video we're going to see more or less the tools that I use, this is a, a review video, it's not it's going to be a full uh, tutorial because a full tutorial to do this model is going to be really really long, but this is meant to be a review, as I said, a review video on the tools that, that I use to do the cause the Bowser's cousin Raul. So in this little video we're going to see the sculpting tools and more a bit of the technique that I use. In the next two videos we're going to see the the way that I did the low res uh, mesh to bake the normals and details of the sculpting on that mesh and the, la the later, la latest one, the third one, is going to be about painting that they going to that they try to take also the tackle also the baking and UV stuff. So in this first video, we're going to see, as I said, more or less how the project is started. So we have here a base mesh, a base mesh because I am using to sculpt multi res. Uh, we have two ways to sculpt inside Blender, which are multi rest and, and in topo, uh, both really really different ways. I'm not going to do. Um, and I'm not going. I'm not going to be to do some detailed explanation about this, but let's do a simple review of those. Okay. So in this, in this first one we're going to set up a multi resolution standard weight of sculpting with which is a subdivided mesh and add some multi resolution modifier and also some subdivision level. So if we go to a sculpt mode we can easily using some brush sculpt on the mesh. If we don't have enough resolution to sculpt, as you can see there, we can add more details to get more vertices to add more detail to our sculpt. Okay, this is more or less what multi-rest does. Works on works on a, a base mesh and subdivided it saving on each level the uh, distortion of the, the um, offsetting of the vertices. Uh, on the other hand we have the sculpt mode we can use the topo and if we enable it the mesh automatically gets triangulated and in this situa in this um, particular case the mesh is not going to get is not going to get resolution based on subdivision levels but it's going to subdivide subdivide the edges depending on some condition like distance from camera or actually the size in pixels of the edges when we are sculpting and this is controlled from here 12 pixels 12 pixels is the size of the length or the length of the pixel that we are going to, uh, we are looking there uh, so if we go closer and closer, the pixel, the the edges are going to be always uh, 12 pixels. What does this mean? Does this mean that if we look closer, we're going to add more details on certain areas than other areas where I can sculpt from far behind? But this is not the only condition. You can also use uh, constant detail, which is based on the percentage the blender unit or you can also use con, um, brush detail which is another different mode in this uh, model I use multi resolution because uh, I want to test it I want to try out what happened if I use it on a more or less real model this model was at the end around six or seven million polygons and um, before this one I did other sculpt that was a million polygon and was really really smooth to work with so I wanted to try uh, again the multi resolution so once I have this base model here uh, with in this case for the moment uh, with the mirror modifier 
I add also, you can see the time lapse of the entire process of the sculpting, the four hours. Of, of course, and time lapse is only 60 minutes. I add something like this, and also probably, I don't remember well, something like this. This is because, as I show you in the example uh, just here with the, with the flying, when I when I be when I will be when I going to be a sculpt on this while I going to be a sculpting on this the mesh is going to be distorted okay and the detail depends on the amount of vertices so if I going to add here something like a horn I need to add to have that extra detail to be uh, able to sculpt without any any problem which can happen if you stretch a lot the mesh while you're sculpting so in this situation I add some extra detail before starting the proper sculpting when we go to motif resolution uh, we have to add at least to start one level of the division and go to the sculpt mode here let's going to see the important parts only these two are uh, add-ons, three are add-ons that shouldn't be turned on but down here we have symmetry which gives us that possibility to do symmetry as scope on different axes also radial symmetry and turn offset symmetry which is a new thing that it's coming with this version of blender we have curve curve is going to also with the help of this which is mask it's going to control how the intensity is going to be applied when we move or uh, we try to sculpt. The darkened areas are the areas of the brush that later that are not going to in influence the and are not going to influence the sculpting and the uh, transparent ones are the areas where are going to get fully influence of the sculpt brush. If you use some code like this, you can see that the entire brush is being used to sculpt and if I use something like this only the middle with the gradient to do some creasing uh, creasing creasing stuff we can see a slope a space based on a space based on the spacing uh, which is 10% of the radius of my stroke so if my brush is that size more or less every 10% it's going to sample to add some uh, a sculpt on the mesh down here shitter that we're going to see later <coughs> a smooth stroke which adds that little line to control a bit smoother the stroke and input sample which is really really important and you're going to see in the time lapse probably more near the end because now I'm working with a really uh, smooth mesh uh, sorry, a really low res mesh and it's the work is really really smooth but when subdivisions rise the thing is getting harder and harder to, to work with so if I move quickly you can see that the curve it's not being sampled well. I got this polygon uh, stuff. Okay, you can see there how it's being sampled. Now, if I add input sample, what is going to happen is one is going to be slower because it's sampling, subsampling the movement of the brush, but it's going to give us a much, much smoother. crash okay there you go Th that is a curve that samples one two three so I'm going to add for examples and when I stroke you can see that uh, more samples per area we probably I'm going to see whether this should occur. No, because
across the globe, some boost every point of the globe. But if you are working on the higher resolution levels and you have a problem with shaggy or shagging borders, like this one, which should be a curve, but it is not, you can write the input samples to get more to get a more certain result. Um, text we are going to see later, and we have strength, radius, auto smooth, which smoothes a bit the mesh while we are um, sculpting. Not always useful, useful, but sometimes it is. Okay, the fir one of the first steps that I did during the production of this model, which looks like a duck now, is to smooth out the shapes to remove that squarish look of the model. But we don't have to have this smooth option enabled here. We can simply, while using any other uh, tool, like this one, I'm going to add some transition lines to show you, while we are using any, any tool, we can press a shift on the keyboard, and when we sculpt, automatically the tool switch to smooth. So, any during the entire um, time lapse of that I hope you are going to see, <laughs> you will see that I sculpt and something smooth, sculpt and smooth. That is because I'm using shift to smooth out every every almost every single uh, stroke. You can also add auto smooth to it and notice how the the shape is not getting so so uh, so strong so so noticeable probably uh, there you can see here the steps of the space if I add some smooth you can see it a bit less that is smooth does doesn't allow me. But the idea is that I'm going to avoid this stuff by auto smoothing a bit. However, always I always smooth on it or over it. Three, two, three, six. Other what is this? What I was going to say? Uh, maybe stroke not the one. Okay, maybe it's because I'm recording is being a bit slow. Uh, I'm setting up this part of the example. Okay, other tool that I used a lot was grease. Grease and I'm sorry. Little bonus tip. This um, panel down here is called Quick Preferences. It's an add-on that is bundled with Blender, and this gives us a lot of uh, options that are usually usually played on the less Blender user preferences. But is here at hand to be used. Really, really nice and useful add-on. Also with many lighting presets. As I said, other tool that I use a lot was Crease. Crease is a mix of, more or less a mix of draw, pinch, um, using the curve, a really sharp curve, and it's used to do this creasing uh, stuff, creasing effect. If you set the crease to add, you can use it uh, more or less as a pinch to give some harder edges on the mesh. Really, really interesting to do. Um, <coughs> how, how could you say cartoon, uh, cartoon sculpting or hard surfaces sculpting? 
but you need to work a bit later because it gave us also that movement there because it's all it also raises the geometry that moves that pinch upwards in the direction of the brush so it requires a bit of work to get something nice but return to the example I uh, usually use a crease to set the muscle and then inflate deflate to tighten up this way we can have bulgy, bulgy muscles and really tight unions which are not going uh, being which are not going which are not looking nice around uh, mm, in this particular example but believe me that when it's used when it's being used right it really looks good uh, what else uh, flatten contrast is another one that I use a lot in this particular uh, example I didn't use it but as you can see here it takes the normals of the faces and when you put the brush it tends to move that in that direction and straighten up towards the brush so it's really really useful to flatten areas and add some flatten areas <laughs> it's redundant but it is what it is so returning to this, those were more or less the brushes that I use I also use, use a graph to modify a bit the position and when I use rub I use it from the lowest possible level and this is why and one of the reasons that I which I use um, multi resolution if I have some sculpture some sculpting detail okay I can go to the lowest level I can select rub for example and change a big chunk of the model but if I go again to the higher levels the details could that it's been retained so this is really really useful to try to reshape or to get things in other positions without losing <coughs> sculpting details really really useful so returning to the techniques on this model the main premise the main thing that I always have in mind when I mo that when I sculpting is to try to get more det the most detail of the level that I have so if I am on this level I try to get all the shapes shoulders arms in this case we have a problem here so we're going to activate front faces only which only affects the front faces towards the brush really really useful I don't remember using it during the project because I probably didn't use a large a, a brush as large as this one but um, it's nice to to show this in the sample okay so once I get uh, all the detail that I could from that level which I could add from many many other places example just there I add a next subdivision level which should be two okay and then give it more detail 
take some like or okay it's 15 again all I did all the model so divide it in give it more detail and this is a progressive refinement stuff step by step going through all the model to get all the detail possible from all level every level to get a nice tidy and optimized uh, sculpt session besides that there's really really no more uh, mystery about it as i said please to add some detail to certain areas like muscles if you want or sculpt them directly with spray brush okay and maybe in place to give that bullish feeling to, to the muscle some smooth using shift and more or less and some patience less uh, football or rugby <laughs> player stuff to give the look of the final sculpt that we're going to see a bit about here there are a few things more that I want to show you that I didn't uh, explain at the beginning which are texture and shader and this is why I come to a model like which has this resolution as you can see here this model took to sculpt around uh, four uh, and a half hour actually that hour is here is not update so One of the things that you are going to notice if you see the sketch up version is that this model, as you can see here, is not balanced at all. Um, let me try to don't take it wrong. It's not balanced at all. So if you can see, the balance point is around here. So the tail is going to always <coughs> be touching the, the floor. So on the later model, after I record everything, I went to sculpt mode. I have done. I have selected that and gone to the first level of the tail and in here I added some more belly and move this a bit backwards and this also change a bit like this because with this why is this changes I would move the balance point from here to around here this way this uh, character will have a bit more balanced feeling and <laughs> won't be so awkward when you're looking from the sides remember that a sculpt uh, multi-res retains the detail if you go back and forth on the detail level so that is a really handy tool to work with The two latest things that I want to show you were, as I said, shitter, and I use a shittering to give it some texture detail. If I do a single stroke with clay strips, you can see that this nice clay strips broke. But if I add some shitter to it, a bit less. You can see that I start to break with some little squares on the surface of the mesh. But if I move a lot on the surface of the mesh, I start uh, I 
I start building, I start to build uh, this pattern that was as a texture. We can use an image instead of, of a plain, a plain um, a brush and add several different effects of texture using shitter and a simple, simple brush, as you can see here. And now the latest, latest thing that I want to show you is how to use textures because I didn't explain how to use textures. And the texture were used to do this kind of effect on the back of the character. So with any brush, we're going to select textures. I have one here, but imagine that there is no one, none, and hit new. You can see a black square that does nothing. And we also use come on area plane. So we're going to need to go to and texture tabs under property shelf. And here we have word. In this case, if I set a material a shader or material textures and um, free textures, open uh, free textures on the Blender UI. From here we can select brush texture, brush mask, which will be used on a texture paint. Uh, or also could be listed if you down here modifiers like a dispersion modifier that could be used a texture to work. So if we have something say blender that is using a texture we can come here and look on the list for it. Now now we see here that we have an image or movie so it is it's going to be black because nothing is selected. We're going to remove this and we're going to add uh, no, the <laughs> now I created a second texture. We're going to select down here from the list. Instead of removing, we are not removing anything. We're selecting from the list something like a clouds. We're going to activate RAM to control the contrast. You could also control the color if you are going to use it somewhere else but in this case it's not important because the areas on white are going to be sculptable if that is a word and the darken areas are not going to be sculpted at all because they are going to be masked so if I paint you can see that something is happening but in the case of the, in this in this particular character I use stencil and if I go to options and raise the alpha of the texture you can see that we have a text a stencil in the middle of the screen. If I hit here with a transform, you will find it on the on its default position, which is the lower left corner. Now, if I try to sculpt on this without shader, and raise this. You can see that the detail is started, it's added on the um, brightened areas. Now the problem is that the stencil is at the corner, so I have to move it somewhere else. To move it, it's really really simple. Just use right click and drag. Hold right click and drag. If we wanted, if we wanted to rotate it, it's easily enough as well. Just hold Control, right click and rotate or shift right click to uh, scale it with this you can add some stencil details to the model if you had a, an image to use well select clouds image or movie and choose your image or another maybe in this case texture to use as an uh, extensive to work with. If you want the texture to be on the brush with the brush, like if this would be a Photoshop brush, just use this way. And it goes with the brush. All right, if you want to, the texture rotates with the brush movement. 
Mm, I guess this is all. I guess I cover everything. Probably missing some something, but I don't remember well at the moment. So the next two videos, as I said, are going to be about the modeling of the low res, low res version of the mesh to bake the detail on, and the texture paint. So if you like this video or you are interested on the rest of the time lapses, uh, stay tuned and see you soon. Bye.